Um, where did you see Dwayne take the biggest jump this summer? Well, it was it was really uh, tough because of the zooms all spring, and then all of a sudden you you try to get a baseline and okay, what is he? And then just over time, maybe about two weeks in, uh, things settled in a little bit. The play calls, uh, the speed of the reads, the accuracy as he gets comfortable, those kinds of things showed up. Thank you. For sure. Rhiannon? Oh, no. Um, Coach, in terms of um, Dwayne's just comprehension of, of the play calling and um, really understanding the concepts, was you mentioned that it really started to click at two weeks. What changed? Was it just that um, you know he was just more comfortable with it, or did something happen? Well, as time goes, you get more comfortable on how to say combinations of words and what they mean and how fast that picture appears in your head as you say the play. And when that increases, your mind can then move on to something else, like what are the pre-snap tips, you know, but until you understand what the play means, the formations, where everybody's at, how am I supposed to play this play, it's tough to get those things. Did you learn anything about Dwayne that you didn't otherwise know before um, camp started and you were able to really talk to him and, and work with him? Uh, no, you get a pretty good uh, chance through Zoom and – you know, to, to get a chance on the personality style. What I didn't get a chance to see was just the work in person, which was fun to watch. He loves uh, the drill work. He loves competing. Seven on seven, 11 on 11, it doesn't matter. He just loves to be out there playing, which is fun. It's a great starting point for us, and we can uh, progress from there. It's, it's, he's a hungry player, which makes it a lot easier. It's, it's tough when you've got to drag him with you. Uh, I really enjoyed that part of him. Let's circle back to Rhiannon. All right, David, go ahead. Matt Harris. Michael Phillips, are you on? I think people are having sound issues. Yeah, it looks that way. Sam, it looks like you're not frozen. Go ahead. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, hey, Ken, Sam 48 with the Washington Post. Um, you, you said that you like your, your quarterbacks to have, like, the footwork of a, of a boxer, and I, and I wonder if, uh, if you've seen that from Dwayne, if you think he's ready to, to get in the ring. <laughs> yeah, he's ready to get in the ring. Yeah, I just referenced just being your, in your most reactionary position. It's either you're going to throw the ball as quick as you can or you're going to move as quick as you can. Either way, something's going to happen fast, so we need to be bent kneed and ready to go. And I wonder, you know, Ron uh, was talking about how early in the year uh, he had said, hey, Dwayne, you know, we need you to slim down to kind of be able to do X, Y, and Z in this new offense. What are some of the things that, that maybe his, like, his new body would allow him to do um, that, that you guys would need? <laughs> We're banking on him not getting caught from behind a couple times, being able to come through some of those holes and out the other side of it and uh, still being big enough to take some of the punishment that comes with it. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Ken. Uh, hey, Ken. It's uh, Chris Russell here. Thanks for doing this. Um, just curious, now that you've had the chance to obviously work with Dwayne, and I know obviously the games are going to bring on a different set of challenges, w what is one area that, or the next area that you'd like to see him maybe improve and get a little bit better at now that he's accomplished – a lot of the things that you guys were looking for when you first got here. Yeah, I'm really excited to see the emotional ups and downs of a game and how we can stay up, up mentally and resilient mentally. Because we have, you don't have that. There's not a score in practice per se, but when the score gets involved, different, uh, different pressures, you know, apply themselves and how resilient we'll be to push through and come out the other side and all those kinds of things. I can't wait to watch that. We just, uh, you haven't had the preseason games to, to find those things out. Uh, just to follow up to that, do you sense that he's going to be, um, I guess, good at, at, at 
at being resilient and bouncing back from maybe a bad throw, a bad read, a bad decision, a bad whatever. Do you have that any of that sense yet, or do you really need the game situation for that to, in order to even remotely evaluate it? Well, I have all the confidence in the world that he's going to be fine when those things happen, and then uh, we'll play the game. We'll find out. It'll be a test for a lot of different things for all of our guys, and uh, I know we have a very, very solid group in our room, very resilient, very supportive. He'll have a great supporting cast when he gets to the gets to the sideline. I know that. Thank you. Hey, Ken, this is Les Carpenter at the Washington Post. Um, you've coached guy, obviously, quarterbacks who have started both in their first and their second years. What is the difference between that for a quarterback? Because I imagine, that, and maybe it's different with each guy, but I imagine that there's a certain gulf there that, that gets filled the second year. Which guys that are successful and which guys aren't or first year to second year? Thoughts? Probably just general, and then maybe there's something specific. Yeah, usually the guys that are successful early know who they are. They're, they're grounded in a self-belief. They're not trying to figure out who they are, what their opinions are, what their belief system is, any of those things. The guys that are grounded and have a good supporting cast, have a pretty good O-line and group around them to throw to, usually have success early. But the, the mental side of knowing who you are really handles the ups and downs and the emotional swings of the position because everybody's coming for you. That's for sure. You haven't done this yet. You can't do that. You haven't done that yet. I mean, everybody's coming for you. So the resiliency and knowing who you are really makes a uh, self-esteem. Those kind of things are a big deal. And then first year to second year, uh, it, it's easier to tell in the in the same offense. You can make bigger jumps because you're not worrying about the verbiage. But just being able to handle a, a professional game day, I think, is a big deal. What is my week to week? What do I do after practice? What film do I watch to get ready for the next day? How do I take care of my body? How do I eat right? How do I sleep right? Those things are things you think about year one. Those are things that you don't think about year two or should not have to think about year two. So you're not wasting mental energy and mental space on things that aren't game related. Those things you were talking about earlier about the confidence and the understanding and belief system, can that all be taught? Or is some of that just going to have to be innate? Yeah, I think you come in with, with a set of it and then the, the support system that you put around a guy and uh, letting him and developing a relationship where he knows he's got somebody that, that's with him all the time. And then the group, you know, as we learn and work together and compete together, there's a group that he enjoys to be around and, and learn from and get pushed by that's got his back all the time. Really makes it easy to weather the ups and downs. Uh, a, a, a person alone in his thoughts is a lonely guy on game day and during the game week. Uh, the relationships is what boost us up on the days that, that we have a chance to be down. You know, we have a choice and all that, but we also have help if we've developed the relationships right. And we're really trying to foster a, a atmosphere of support and encouragement and fierce competitiveness in, in our room. Thanks. Hi, Ken. Pete Haley with NBC Sports Washington. Thanks for the time this afternoon. Can you describe your style on game days uh, how hands-on or hands-off do you expect to be and what kind of things are you what kind of conversations will you be having with Dwayne and the other quarterbacks throughout the contest yeah there'll be a lot of conversation on the sideline until Dwayne gets there and then it'll be the conversation that only matters to him there's always a lot of thoughts and things that we're putting together and there's some guys on the sideline that have played a lot of games and their opinions are very much respected but quarterback's head has so much space on game day tell him as little as possible to uh, get him to be able to process fast and play fast, but get all the points across. It's a little easier said than done, but knowing the person and having a relationship, uh, I can just eyeball him and he knows what I'm, what we're thinking or, or put my hands above my head. He knows, hey, make sure the next ball is thrown above his head. There's little ways to communicate that doesn't take much mental effort. And we try to do as much of that as possible. We don't sit there in long conversations and have to, you know, debate topics. We already have been through it once, and I think the shorter the conversations, the better. And speaking of his, you know, quarterback having so much space, how do you and Scott and Ron and Alex and all these voices, how do you make sure that the messages you're communicating are all pretty much the same or you're not overpowering him with too many different uh, angles or thoughts? Well, I always uh, defer to the head coach and the coordinator whenever they have something to say. And then I kind of evaluate, okay, when's the best time to approach on a different topic or reinforce the topic, you know, right then and there. And that's getting to know the person and how much is in there and the look on his face when, it's, when it does get overloaded. Because everybody gets overloaded. But what's the look? How do you know? 
It's like uh, hey, knowing when your dog needs to go out, you know, just by the look on his face or the way he's walking around the living room. You, you need to know things about people's body language, and that only comes in time. And so uh, we've been spending a lot of time and getting to know each other. That's a great comparison. Thank you. Let's go, Scott hey. Abraham. Yeah, Ken, Scott Abraham, ABC7. Um, kind of a big picture here. Obviously, the season opener, the NFL season opener is tonight. Did you have any doubt or concern with this crazy offseason and this COVID-19 climate that the NFL, we would get to this point and finally kind of have football? Oh, I, that's so far down the list of concerns. It doesn't even bubble up. We're trying to get a guy that's essentially a, a half-year player to be a uh, – a starter, a winning starter for us uh, on, on the Washington football team. All those other things will handle themselves. It'll be the same for everybody around the league. And if it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm sure glad it's here because I wanted it to be just like this. Thank you. All right, we'll take two more. I have a follow-up question. Um, who will be down on the sideline and who will be in the booth? among coaches yeah that's probably a better question for for coach turner or coach rivera when you get him the next time hey coach donna hopkins pro football plus in keeping Dwayne kind of like calm because he's going to already be hyped up for the game on sunday on saturday night what would be the one thing that you would stress most to him in that conversation with him yeah, we're going to go over some of the things that we think are going to happen in the game in some critical situations you know our third down in our red zone We'll talk through the different things that came up through the week regarding that play and what we expect. And then, uh, again, not say too much and let the physical talent and the reactionary ability of the player take over. Uh, and then just, hey, get some sleep and let's go have some fun the next day and execute. Do what you're here to do. All right, Coach, thanks so much for your time. Right. Thanks, y'all.